Thanks very much, Jack. And our next presenter is Jeff Sandhu, who's on my right. Jeff is a producer for Malaysia's only 24-hour business radio station. That's BFM 89.9, and there are some pretty cool stickers out there on the table, and it's free, right? Yeah, and it says, what does it say? It says, Bride Free Malaysian. I have one on my car. That didn't stop the police from trying to ask me for a bribe, but um, yeah, go pick up a free sticker, car sticker, after today's presentation. Uh, Jeff has a background in multimedia design and in video and animation. After spending a few years in the advertising and post-production industry, he began at BFM as the producer for Tech Talk, a 30-minute technology segment. The three-year-old program, and this is a plug for BFM 89.9, is dedicated <laughs> to bringing news about the local and global technology industry. All right? And Jeff himself has produced over 300 interviews for the show with people worldwide. Impressive. His topic tonight is going to touch on how the Evidence Act will affect consumers and the IT industry and why regulating the internet will never work. Let's hear it, Jeff. Yeah, um, I'd just like to follow up from Jack, she was saying about China, so I will give some examples of China. Um, I'm going to start off because this been a whole, we basically covered quite a broad aspect already. I'm just going to quote uh, Nazri Abdul uh, Aziz. He said that, um, and I quote, yeah, without the act, we will be at the mercy of unscrupulous people and we won't be able to charge anyone. We don't intend to withdraw the act. Now, if they can't trace who did this, how can you trace? You know, are they going to help you? It's, it's, it's mind baffling in a way. Now, the thing is, when you, if you look at it at the bigger picture, it's basically they're saying this, you've got to be more aware. And which is true, I do agree at some extent, we've got to be more aware of what we post on our social sites and so forth. I've just got a few pictures here. Um, these are the kind of stuff that we see on Malaysia Facebook uh, sites that we post, <laughs> things that we post. Uh, let's go on to the next picture. These are, again, some of the things that we, we read on, on, on online sites. Go to the next picture. This one, again, this was a very famous picture that's going on viral. Go to the next one. And this was the best one that everyone was, you know, this is, this is coming from Jonathan Kabajikan Masharika and, you know, we, they post this kind of stuff. So, yeah, we got to be more aware of what we say on the online world. Um, it's, it's just ridiculous in some ways. Now, so, okay, basically they're, they're pushing the honours on you now and you, the thing is, there's so many trolls. Uh, I know Fung has mentioned about internet trolling and keyboard warriors and all. Um, see, the IT community in Malaysia right, has just recently kind of like breathed a sigh of relief uh, because of the CBP. Um, and then we saw the amount of you know, issues being raised you know, uh, during the open sessions and, and they couldn't even answer some of the questions that we raised to them. And you know, although the Evidence Act is completely different to what it's trying to achieve, but in the bigger picture, it's still very much open to abuse. And uh, you might be thinking, you know, how's, how's this going to affect you? Well, basically, your freedom of speech online, zero, gone. Um, and by doing this, you know, the government has even basically strike fear. Uh, and I don't know, before you post something, now you're going to be thinking twice. This is not the wawasan doblo doblo that I grew up with and thinking that, oh, also local, local, going to have flying cars, you know, because I was young back, back then, you know. Um, Facebook, Malaysians are very active on Facebook. Uh, we have more than 12 million uh, registered users. And, uh, you know, we see a lot of Malaysians, they voice out their stuff using Facebook, using Twitter, but they don't really attend these kind of events. Um, so how do you regulate Facebook then? If, if they say that they, they will be, you know, um, they will be finding out whether you did this, you did that. So how do you do it? That's my question. How do you do it? Um, there's 12 million Facebook users. Uh, and, uh, you know, if you just look at some of the things here, if you read this, this should make you scared already. And uh, it's, it's going to affect you personally, but also in terms of your business. Now, if you're running a cafe with a free Wi-Fi service, you're held responsible straight away. Um, or if someone is piggybacking your, 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 your free Wi-Fi, if someone's just parked outside of Starbucks using your Wi-Fi, so then what, Starbucks is self-responsible? 
No. Um, you know, what happens if you're, if you're found guilty? You, or, in a way, basically, there's no such thing as found guilty here. You're basically guilty straight away. And then you've got to prove your innocence, which is, uh, we, we've basically mentioned this uh, a couple of times already. Now, you're, you're not, when this happens, you're basically not allowed to say or comment anything. You are not allowed to share. And this is a big worry because I'm a big fan of Twitter and I love to retweet stuff. And I even have automated some retweet functions. So if anyone hashtag uh, Jeff Sandu rocks, it automatically gets retweeted. I don't even have to look for it. You know? uh, and everyone's online, you know, and everyone starts some business using the online world and you know, then they make it big. Look at people like Mark Zuckerberg and Bill Gates, you know, when they were young, they used the online world and they rely on interaction on the online world, what's, on, what's trending on the internet world, what, what do we need, what is lacking. So we use technology to improve our lives. And we, how do we do that? We basically see what's trending and, and, and what's happening. And, um, you know, the, the whole thing is so broad, but they say that this is trying to curb um, anonymity and so that they can, you know, find out who is saying wrong things and doing wrong things. But my question is, is like, they should just actually Google how to forge email, because if I just did a Google search recently, and we probably Google in that, um, it shows you a whole bunch of pages, um, it, and there's one page, it's the first link. It, it goes to a wiki how website, which tells you step by step for dummies who don't even know how to do anything, a 10 step procedure of how to forge an email address. So I can actually be sending an email pretending to be Asohan and thinking that, that you know, it, it's, it's cool to be Asohan, yes, but I can pretend to be him in just a couple of minutes to do that. So then how will he claim that that was not sent by me? How would he do that? It's, it's difficult. And then, you know, there's a lot of sites, sites like amans.my, um, they're one of the new sites that is coming up. And I recently just interviewed a guy uh, from Hacker Monthly. He's a, a local Chinese guy from Penang. Now he gathers news from uh, Yahoo sites and, and Hacker News and all, and he curates into a magazine. And he, the way that he picks his articles is articles that are trending the most. Now if, if this happens, right, he will face a problem as to he will not know which articles among the millions of articles on the web, which are the most that people want to know about, you know, the most that people are talking about. He will have a problem with creating a magazine and he's, he's a very young guy, 24 years old, 25 years old, making tons of money and doing this all via crowdsourcing. Crowdsourcing is where you sit at home on your PC and you're working with someone on the other side of the world and you can make money from that. You're running a business using that, that, that system. This doesn't allow that to happen anymore because you, you're afraid to share, you're afraid to talk, you're afraid to voice. Um, and then we talk about China recently. No, the, sorry. All right. Okay. So this is sorry about the too many slides. I'm just jumping, trying to save time. Um, this is Google in China. Um, China, as we know, we they not they censor and regulate the internet very heavily. And uh, this is partly, uh, now if, you, if you've been to China, the internet is very, very slow. The reason is that's three. Partly because of the congestions in uh, internet, uh, China's internal networks, with a, which affects domestic and international transmissions. And then partly it's because of the electrons that take a detectable period to travel from beneath the Pacific Ocean servers in America and then back again. And then partly it's because of the delaying cycles imposed by China's system that monitors what people are looking for on the internet. Now, this is a, a screenshot of someone searching for something and has said that, that you are searching for you know, something that and this may temporarily break your connection to Google. So basically, it will not allow you to search anything. And if it does allow you to search, they will know that you are searching. They will trace your IP address and they'll in instantly know. And if this happens, this is probably like a way, probably a bit too far ahead. But this might happen. They might even do, go ahead and do this. Because it's easy then. As soon as they, they search that, oh, 
Jess Andu from VFM is searching this. Let's just go to VFM and find out who did this. Because they've got the IP address of VFM. Simple. Now, we don't want to have internet censorship like this. Um, but the chances are they might resort to, to, to doing something like this. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's good enough that according to Google that our internet speed is bad. Um, we're amongst the slowest in the country, uh, in the world, uh, for loading web pages on desktops and computers, and as well as mobile computers. And, you know, if we do start to regulate the internet, then we might as well resort to pigeon mail, I think, because that will be faster. Jeff, um, Jeff, for a minute. All right, okay, cool. Now, um, I'm not sure if you know about how to basically be invincible. It's very easy. Um, there are stuff like, uh, hold on. So there's stuff like Pro XPN and Bode VPN, which is basically a highly popular thing, and I'm very sure the government don't even know what this do. Um, this is very simple. This is basically for you to, there, there's a site called hidemyass.com. Hidemyass is basically, it hides your ID. And if you go to that site, you can basically visit any website in the world without being traced. I don't think the government know that these kind of things exist. And it, it's, it's, a, it's a good example of, again, the government trying to implement something that they don't even understand how the industry works. Uh, so I'll just end it there. And can you just stand there for a couple yeah. more minutes? I can ask you some questions. Yeah. You mentioned, and I think Jack also mentioned, that um, this law is going to, for certain, affect businesses in some way. Yep. Um, and I'm just wondering what your sense is of how affected businesses are going to be, and do you think that businesses are actually going to take the government to task? I don't see too many business owners here tonight, I think. Well, um, so my show is basically, I interview a lot of SMEs, so I'm just going to um, have, I have some stats here now, we have, we have a very high rate of SMEs, apparently um, SMEs make up about 98% of businesses in Malaysia in 2011, and they've contributed about 31% to the GDP, and 59% to the workforce, and account for 19% of Malaysia's total national exports. Now, if you're wondering how will this affect your business and should they be worried? Yes, because if you're running a cafe, and recently, if I'm not mistaken, they've even passed a law where all restaurants in KL are supposed to have public Wi-Fi. Now, if, you've got, if you're running a restaurant in KL and you are by law required to have a free public Wi-Fi, you might as well just walk into the jail, walk, walk into the court and say, it's like, arrest me. Because it's, you, and yes, they should actually go to the government and and speak out and, and raise this point, you know, why should we, why is there a law that's saying that we should have free Wi-Fi and in the end of the day, knowing that there's the amount of risk that is open to, you know, people can abuse your, your system, they, sh they should voice out. And perhaps if businesses did get together to um, express their sense of outrage mm. and to put pressure on the government, then it would be more likely that the government would resign this amendment, right? Yeah, and the thing that I've realized is because this has this topic has been done, that's been covered in BFM about twice already now. And the the thing that I notice is Malaysia have this this common thing where we voice about something for a day or two and then we just completely ignore it. Um, this thing has been going on for I think a good three weeks now. Um, I've personally in BFM when I ask when I go around asking my friends, do you know about this act? They're like, oh no, it doesn't affect me, won't affect me. If, we have to keep voicing this thing. If you're a business owner, you have to make sure, take notice, you know, this is a good effect of business. This, this, is, this is not a small thing, it's not a laughing matter at all. It's a silly, it's a silly law, it's a, it's a silly amendment to a law, but the consequences is not silly at all. Thank you, Jeff.